Hi everyone, welcome to this video on how to customize the Lego character created by Agora Studio for Agora Community to use in the April Anim Challenge. In this video, I'm going to show you where to get the character from, and I'm also going to show you where to get some really cool resources and textures to use in your animation. So first of all, you want to come here to Agora Community, that's agora.community, and head over to the Assets page. And when you're here, you'll see that we have the Lego base for both Maya and Blender. So whatever software you choose to use, uh, this tutorial is going to cover both of those. So for the sake of demonstration, I'll just come in here to the Maya. And you can see some of the textures I've already played around with creating. Scroll down here, you'll already see that this video exists. But then if we keep coming down, uh, you'll find the download button here, as well as different size texture packs. And we're also including the substance file. So we're just going to come back and download this rig. Okay, once that's finished downloading, open it up and we'll just take a quick look. You'll want to export this to whatever uh, folder you want it to be in. Inside you'll find a how-to when it comes to installing the picker for the character. And you'll also find the Lego texture template for Photoshop and also Krita uh, should be in there as well. Yep. Now, once you've gone through and unzipped this, we'll get into the rest of the video that shows you how you can create your own textures. So first of all, a really awesome resource to find textures for these LEGO characters is mechabricks.com. If you haven't heard of it, you can just go to their website, uh, mechabricks.com up here. And if you do use any of these textures, please, 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 where you can tag uh, this website and these creators on on social media just to really uh, drive some traffic towards them. Uh, it would be amazing to help build their community as well through this challenge. So what we're going to do is first of all come up here to the library and it will load all of these uh, assets that have been made by other artists. You can see there profiles down here and like I said before please if you do use any of these uh, make sure to just you know check out who the artist is and maybe give them a credit I'm not sure if it has any of their social media profiles here but uh, always just uh, tag Mechabricks where you can and then uh, if we come back let's go into category and let's look for minifigures now, I've already got one in mind that I want to use for this, but as you can see, you can kind of scroll through and just look at the library, or if you want, you can uh, filter here by the theme. So we have all themes, Batman, Avatar, uh, all sorts. Ghostbusters, which you might have seen in the announcement video. But the one that I want to use, which I think looks cool, is I'm going to come down to Scooby-Doo, and we will take a look at... This one here, Zombie Zeke. So I'm just going to click on this and it's going to pop up the 3D view. And here it's just going to load all the files. And now you can see we have this kind of 360 uh, view of the model. Then we're going to come up here to Editor. And what this is going to do is it's going to open the Mechabricks Workshop. But instead of us having to construct the character by coming down here filtering through all the different assets that you need. It's just going to have the character created already for us. And then what I'm going to do is come up here to File, and then I'm just going to click Export. And the format I usually use, because I use Maya, is an OBJ, and I'm just going to export that file. Now, once that's done, you can open up the zip file and come into the textures folder, just sort of sort through all the different folders that it's created. And these are the two textures that you want. Once you've got these two textures, uh, export them into another folder of your choice. And then what we're gonna do is jump into Photoshop. 
Okay, once we're in Photoshop, what we're going to do is open the Agora Lego texture template and you'll be able to find this texture template in here. So this is just in my work folder, but inside the package that you've downloaded from the website, you'll have this zip file, base Lego texture template Photoshop. So you'll be able to just open that one straight away. Now let's take a look at this. So these are the UVs for the character. And in the layer structure here, we have the kind of guidelines of the UVs as well as kind of a texture map. So you know where the front of the face is and the back of the head. And you can simply just hide those when you're ready to export this or if you want to do some sort of more work uh, on the textures but not have all this stuff in the way. And you can just switch the map off there. If you do want to work with the UVs on, you can always come up here and just lock this folder and you can continue to work on all the other layers without this getting in the way. So now that we have our textures from Mechabricks, what I'm going to do is come into where I've saved them and I'm just going to open them in Photoshop here. Okay, so we have the torso, we have the face and the pants were just a flat color, which we'll be able to adjust uh, here in the template as well. So I'll start by selecting the face here. Now, what I normally do, I'm not going to do it for the purpose of this tutorial, but I use an upscaler to just get a better resolution on these images. And you might need to do that because the texture pack here might be a bit higher resolution than the textures that you're bringing in. So if you scale them up, they might start to look a little bit blurry. And what I'm going to do is I'll just switch this off and come back here and turn on the map again. And after playing around a little bit, I found that this zone here where the dotted square is, is the best place to put the face for it to look natural. So I'm just going to come down into the head folder and I'm going to paste. And then what I've done here is I've just pressed control T to transform uh, the asset so I can easily move it. And as you can see, it is a little bit small there. So I'm just going to scale it up and place it here. And then what we can do is come back into the zone here. I'm just going to move this square down a bit and take the back of the head. I'm just going to copy that and I'm going to paste it in here as well. And we're going to pop that just in there and we can resize that one as well. So now to change the rest of the color of the head, if you come down here into the folder for the head, we have the head base color and it's got a color overlay effect on it. And what we can do is just double click on the layer, come into the color overlay effect and then click on the yellow square and then just pick a part of the actual skin tone there and press OK, and that's going to change the rest of the color for the head. And now what we're going to do is just come back into the body now and essentially just do the same thing. I'm going to select this. Well, actually, what you can do with this one, if I uh, unselect that, I'm just going to select it all, whoops, and copy it. And then we're going to come down to the chest here and I'm just going to paste that in there. Then what I can do is actually move this and it's relatively pretty good. And if I rescale it here, then I can just kind of move it into place. So around where this area is here with the curve uh, is where you want to have the textures for the body. And this, we're just going to come in here and we can just erase uh, this little bit. It's it's for the neck. Uh, back in the day, I don't know if it still does, but the Lego characters would have that little color on the neck for some reason. So we can just simply remove that. And then again, I'm going to come to the uh, layer three here. I'll need to give that a quick rename, but I'm just going to select the color and then that's going to change the rest of the color for the body. So that's the body done, the front and back. As I said, for the pants, uh, I'm just going to come down to the right leg base color and I'm going to change that 
to the brown color on his belt here. There we go. And what I'm going to do is just copy that layer style and then I can come into the rest of the body parts and just paste the layer style and also the hips. You can go in and do this manually for each one, but it's probably almost just as easy to do it uh, like this. And the same with the chest. I'm going to go back and find that. I'm going to copy that layer style and then just come down to the arms as well. And we're going to paste that there. And you know what you can even do is just even click on there and paste layer style. So that's the arms, and now we just need to do the hands. For that, I'm going to copy the layer style for the head. And then come back to the hands. Paste layer style. And paste layer style. Okay, so now that we've got all of our textures created, what we're going to do is save this as a JPEG in the customs folder in the source images of the rig pack. So we're just going to come down to save a copy and I will go into the base Lego source images custom and we're going to save it as a JPEG. So you can see here I've already got the custom full body .jpg. So yes, I'm just going to replace that. Okay. So now that we're back in Maya, make sure that you have the MG Picker tools installed. If you don't, there's information on how to do this into the how-to. You can do this manually, but we created a script that you can use, which makes it as easy as clicking a button. So I'm just going to come up here and click on the uh, Picker tool. Now, if it opens and you don't see the Picker, just come over to these three dots here and go load all in-scene picker nodes, and it's going to bring up the actual picker. Next, what we want to do is come over here to use custom texture. But before we do that, because we actually put the eyes and the mouth on the UVs themselves, we want to come into the rig and turn the eyes and the mouth of the Lego character off. So what I'm gonna do is select this control up here, I'm going to come to the channel box and I'm going to turn the face rig on and then from here select the eye controls and we're going to change those to none and do the same with the mouth. We're just going to select that as none and then you can just turn off the face rig. We're not going to need it. Now we're going to come back into our picker and I'm going to select use custom texture and voila, it swaps it all over for us. So now we can animate a zombie, a Lego zombie character. Okay, so let's say you want to take this a step further and you want to customize the eyes and mouth and eyebrows in a way that you can actually move them around using the face rig. Unfortunately, as of this point, there's some bugs in the script that's preventing this, but I'm going to show you a destructive way on how to do it. And by destructive, I just mean replacing the original texture files and not the custom files. So what we're going to do is maybe just copy uh, the folder that the base character's in, rename it to zombie or something like that. And then that way you're not, uh, you've, you've got a backup of the original file. So we're gonna come back over here into Photoshop. And as you'll see, I've got the, uh, the full body uh, custom that we created and I'm just actually going to go and save this as a TIFF. So we'll come into here and we'll save it over the original one. We're just going to hit yes and then that should all be okay. And then what we're going to do, so let's say that we wanted to create um, customize. So what we'll do is we're going to open up the open eye base and just select that one. Now to do this, uh, this is where I use an upscaler because if I come in here and select the original eye that we want to use, 
you'll see that compared to the texture for the character, it's actually quite small and it's going to look very, very pixelated. So what we're going to need to do is either, as I said, upscale it, or you can just go through and kind of create your own uh, textures. So I'm just going to... Now, you won't need to include the highlight because uh, it's already baked in or it's already its own asset on the rig. And then I'm just going to duplicate this one and scale up this one. And then we'll just turn that one black. And then there's just kind of the general cleanup that you'll want to do in terms of uh, selecting sort of this skin here. We don't really want any of that in the way. Just delete that. Then we're going to hide the eye that's underneath. And then what we're going to do is we'll just flatten this image. So we'll merge the layers. And then I'm just going to save it. Now, the thing that you have to keep in mind with this, uh, this method of doing it is there are masks that are creating a cutout of the shape. So if we come back into our texture folders, you'll see here that we have a mouth mask, the cheek wrinkle mask. So you're gonna to have to create a mask as well for this new shape, otherwise the, script, uh, the replacement won't work. So to do this, all I'm gonna do is double click and we're going to go color overlay and turn it to a black texture but then underneath what I also need to do is create a white texture as well and then we're going to merge this new image and we're going to go file save as and in the folder we're going to find the open eye mask ah sorry yeah we'll select yes okay and then when we jump back into Maya, what we'll need to do is come over into our rig. We'll look for the textures for the eyes. So eye group. We'll select either one. We'll do the left one because that's the one we worked with. And then come over into your attribute editor. And then what we want to do is come into the color and that should already be replaced. So let's just maybe hide the eye contour group. Try this again. There we go. So now we have the yeah, the new custom eye. And if we turn on the face rig, you'll see that this will move around. And then you can just move the highlight to wherever you want it. And then you'll go through and you'll do the same with the mouth, the eyebrows and everything like that. And that's uh, going to be the best way to create your own custom rig that has a lot more uh, flexibility when it comes to animating the face. Just a couple more things to note. Uh, if you don't want to use textures from Mechabricks and you want to create your own, it's really easy to do. Just come in to the folders for each of the parts and you can uh, paint your own textures, whatever you want. So have fun uh, coming up with your own Lego characters. It'd be really cool to see uh, something completely different. Maybe there's a character that doesn't exist. I had fun creating a Beetlejuice type character. So yeah, have some fun with that. If you don't have Photoshop, we've also created a file that you can use within Krita. 
that's a free piece of software that does the same sort of things as Photoshop does. And let's say you want to change the color of the chest, for example, just come into the chest base color here and you can adjust the layer style similar to what you do in Photoshop and just uh, choose another color. And there you go. And then you can add your layers, add all your faces and come up here to uh, UVs and turn those off same as you would in Photoshop. So now let's jump back over into Blender and I'm just gonna open up a fresh scene. So we'll come up here to open and I'm going to select my rig and I'm just gonna set allow execution there. Just give us a little bit more space here and move that up there. Now you can see straight out of the box, there's a little bit of uh, weirdness going on with the mouth. So two ways that we can fix this is by just pressing on the viewport shading button here, or you can hold down Z and come into material preview as well is another way to do that. And it will do its thing. And now we'll have normal looking textures. So now what we wanna do in a non-destructive way to change the textures of this character is come down here and we're gonna open up another area down here, drag this up. And we're going to come over here and go into the shader editor. And then I'm gonna select the body of the character. And if we just zoom in here, you can see that we have Just want to make sure I've got this right. Yep, so the color here is going into the base color right here. So what we want to do is come back into where we saved that custom file here. And I'm just going to drag it into this viewport. Once that's in there, I'm going to disconnect the color from here. And you can see it's disconnected there and I'm going to plug in the color of the new shader that we created. Whoops, and I did not mean to do that. So what I was trying to do was move this out the way. Then we're going to unplug that and plug that in. And you can see that it's uh, replaced the textures. However, we're gonna have to do a little bit of housekeeping here. Okay, and we're just gonna come up to the top here and go into pose mode select the control above the head there and for the head accessory i'm just going to click and drag that to zero and what we can also do because the eyes and the mouth are baked into the uvs we're going to need to hide all of the other textures and we can do that by coming up here into the scene collection into mesh expressions and all you need to do is just click on the eye icon here to turn off all of those uh, expressions that we don't need. And that is how we do it in a non-destructive way. Now, this is quite possibly an easier way. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna come back into Photoshop and here I'm gonna go file, save as, and we will come back into our texture here. And what I'm going to do is change the file mode into a TIFF. And then I'm going to find the base textures. So you might wanna create a copy of your character and do this for each different version that you wanna create, each different kind of character. So I'm just gonna select yes, and all of that's fine, okay. And then what I'm gonna do is come back into Blender and I'm just gonna go open, I'm not gonna save, and I'm going to open that file again. But when I do, you can see that the textures are already there. And you'll need to go through and do the same process of uh, turning off um, the eyes and the eyebrows and the mouth. And that's how you replace the textures for the Blender character. Now, if you want to go a step further and have a lot more flexibility over these characters, I'll show you what you can do to create custom eyes, custom mouths, custom eyebrows, kind of whatever you want to do. So I'm going to jump back over into Photoshop.
Okay, so now that I'm back in Photoshop, I've gone through and I'm going to do this in the destructive way just to show you, but the same method would apply when replacing the rigs in the non-destructive way. So what I've done is in the texture folder, I've located all of the TIFF files that I want to change. So you can do this for as many of these uh, different versions as you want. So if you want different variations of the same eye, the same eyebrow, the same mouth, then you can go through and do this. And then what I'm going to do is you can see here that I've got the eyebrow, the eye and the standard mouth and the uh, sort of cheek wrinkle is what we're calling it. And I'm just going to come into the face here and I will select one of the eyes. Now this is where an upscaler helps. Or if you want, you can even go through and just recreate these yourself. So I'm just going to copy one of the eyes here and come into the open eye. I'm going to paste it. And as you can see, it's actually quite small. So this is where having uh, the upscaler helps. You can see the resolution on that's quite bad. So what we can actually do is just uh, recreate some of this stuff ourselves. So if I do this. Now you shouldn't need to recreate the eye highlight, this little highlight here, because it does come included in the rig. So I'm just going to fill that. And then what I might do is just uh, duplicate that. Whoops, that actually didn't do what I wanted it to do. So let's create a new layer. And then I'll just do this. Whoops. And then I will fill it with black and then I'm going to come into here and I'm just going to paste it and as you can see it's quite small so when I actually scale this it's going to look really kind of uh, distorted here and just really badly pixelated. So this is where you might want to do something like actually recreate the texture. So if I just drag out a circle here and choose the red color. Now you shouldn't have to do the highlight because it does come included in the rig. Just fill that. And then what I'm going to do is just duplicate that one. Take the bottom one, expand it. And I'll select it and fill it in. And then what we actually want to do is come into the original layer and we'll just delete that skin color. We're not going to need it. For the this example, this will be fine. What I'm going to do now is overwrite the file that's in the, uh, the Blender textures. Again, save this into the custom if you don't want to do it the destructive way. So we'll go... Uh, maybe we'll just flatten it. Actually, this is probably one of the best ways you can do it is just flatten the image. So merge layers and then just press control S and just save it. And if we come into here, you can see that it's been saved and we can go through and do that with all of the other sort of files here. So I'll go ahead and do this and then I'll skip to once it's all done. Okay, so I've gone through and I've replaced all of the ones that I've wanted to replace. The eye, the mouth, the eyebrow, the cheek wrinkle. Now, one thing that I also did was come into the main texture and I removed those parts of the face from the main texture. And if we come through here, you'll just see. I had to, this eyebrow is a little bit tricky because it's so chunky. So it might not look great when we get it into Blender, but we'll just see how it goes. So now that that's all done, again, I'm going to come back into here and I'm just going to open a new scene and I'm going to allow execution. 
Now these here uh, will have to hide the outline of the eye there. So if we come into the mesh, expressions, left eye and right eye, this is uh, being called the eyelash. And we'll do the same here, the eyelash. Okay, so you'll see that there's uh, some weird stuff going on with the eyebrows and the actual shape. It's because we actually have a mask that is uh, stopping that. So I'm just going to pull up another window. I'm going to come into the shader editor and I will come back to object mode, select the eye. And what we want to do is the eye that's going into the base color. Uh, we just want to take the alpha as well and plug that in. And we want to do the same with the eyebrow, take the alpha, plug it into the alpha, and the same with the cheek wrinkle. If I can select that, yep. And that one. And same with the mouth. And that is that. So he's still got his hair, you'll have to change that. But if we now select the eye, we can actually move the eye around. It's actually part of the controls. And the same with the mouth, we can move the mouth around. We can scale it if we want to. So that just gives a lot more uh, flexibility to your animation instead of just baking it onto the textures. Now, you saw that I had to switch the alpha out. Uh, you'd have to do the same with the non-destructive mode. You'll see here what I meant by the eyebrows, how if I scale these up and also move them, uh, it's just a little bit funky with how they act because they go over the eye. So if you're doing this character, you might just want to keep, uh, keep that in mind that the eyebrows might need a little bit of refinement. Just a couple more things to note. Uh, if you don't want to use textures from Mechabricks and you want to create your own, it's really easy to do. Just come in to the folders for each of the parts and you can uh, paint your own textures, whatever you want. So have fun uh, coming up with your own Lego characters. It'd be really cool to see uh, something completely different. Maybe there's a character that doesn't exist. I had fun creating a Beetlejuice type character. So yeah, have some fun with that. If you don't have Photoshop, we've also created a file that you can use within Krita. That's a free piece of software that does the same sort of things as Photoshop does. And let's say you want to change the color of the chest, for example. Just come into the chest base color here and you can adjust the layer style similar to what you do in Photoshop and just uh, choose another color and there you go. And then you can add your layers, add all your faces and come up here to uh, UVs and turn those off same as you would in Photoshop. So that is how to create a custom minifigure in Blender. Uh, I can't wait to see all of the submissions that come through for this challenge. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And please don't forget to uh, give credit to Mechabricks if you do use their textures or any of their assets. And good luck with the challenge. Happy animating.